Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, I have two swords, but technically one sword by LK10. We have two different sizes here and a couple of different options, and I am super stoked to show you this and talk to you a little bit more about the Longchuan Dian by LK10. Now, these are the Longchuan Dian by LK Chen, and Longchuan is uh, translates to Dragon Spring or Dragon Well, and it's a very very popular name because it comes from the Longchuan village, where there are many natural springs and resources that were good for making swords. So this village was famous for uh, making high quality swords for um, way back, pro uh, back to the Han Dynasty, I believe and it continues to this day, there are sword factories still in Longchuan. So if you're a sword collector, you may have a sword or a knife made by Longchuan, and it's not just uh, Chinese swords. This is now uh, gone over into Japanese and Korean swords and all sorts of different types of knives. But the Longchuan design that we're looking at here from the Qing Dynasty has a couple of distinct features. Uh, not only does it actually say Longchuan on it, but it has a dragon um, on one of the fittings. Now, these swords are pretty ornate in the fittings from the shape to the scabbard fittings with the dragon, Long Chen, and then even the mouth of the scabbard, and then the guard itself. So you can actually see there's the lion's head and the mouth is open and towards the opponent, as well as some pommel decoration. Now, this is quite intricate, and I would say it's probably second to the white serpent Yen made by LK Chen, but there's a really, really beautiful sword. Now, I keep talking about this as it's one sword, but really I have two here, and this is really cool. You can actually see the two options of the Longchuan Dian, and one is very, very historically important. So first off, I want to point out the Chang Dian, or the Long Dian, and this is basically our typical size Dian um, this has the um, ipe or the Brazilian walnut wood scabbard. Uh, if you want, you can see the uh, natural wood here. This is something that looks quite nice. Uh, it has a nice wooden handle, and this is going to be typical length jian as you would do in modern training. Now, I have to say, with this sword, it is incredibly light, and a lot of that is due to the reduction of metal used in the fittings. Uh, it does have a little bit of a forward pull because it is so light here, but overall it is a quite light and lively sword. It's a 1060 uh, steel or carbon steel with a T8 uh, mixed in with it. You can get this in a beautiful pattern weld. It, it's a really is a gorgeous sword, gorgeous scabbard, has excellent fit and finish, uh, sits really well. There's no scabbard rattling and as well it sits quite nicely. Now one of the things too that you can see is there's a, the hole for the tassel or the lanyard to go through is right here on the jian, which is common for um, Qing Dynasty jian. Now the other option and the actual uh, antique that this sword is based off of is called a duan jian. Duan jian is a short sword and I think this is super cool. This is uh, something I was really excited to be a part of, to, to be able to check out and actually see both in comparison. So before we get to why this sword is short and uh, who would actually be using this sword, this is, uh, it also has the other option available for your scabbard. So you can get the long sword with this scabbard, with the wooden scabbard or the, the wrapped leather scabbard. Uh, you can also get the short sword with the wooden scabbard. It's just this way you can see both options. Now this one also came with the lanyard, but I have removed that and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I really just want to show this sword as it is. It's, it's quite a short sword. And the reason that these swords existed is not for children, it's not for women or other silly things that you might be thinking right now. This short sword was made for everyday carry. So I really like how uh, Lauscher Scott Rodell puts it, and he has a great video on historical Duan Jian, 
uh, talking about um, the, a lot of things with a lot of good historical examples and antique samples. And uh, I'll leave a link to that down below. But the way he puts it is, take a look at like uh, a police officer. Uh, they do know how to use rifles and the, the rifle is a much more powerful weapon, but they don't walk around in their day-to-day -day stuff with a big rifle, you know, slung over their back. They have a pistol on their side. They have a sidearm. So this is technically your sidearm. Now, in other terms, I would say you could consider this like the wakazashi of jian or in Chinese swords. And again, this is uh, a, a great explanation from Scott Rodell says that, you know, you, this would be something that people could wear on them during times where they know they're not going into battle, but you never know if you're going to need it. The uh, Qing dynasty was full of all sorts of different types of rebellions. It was a hot time. There was a lot going on. So you might have to have a sidearm on you. And this was a great option. Now, in usage, I have to say I absolutely love this sword. I am obsessed with it right now because um, it gives me an opportunity to practice my forms with a sword in a confined space. So I have gone over a lot of my traditional sword forms. And the thing is, even though it's short, it does not lose the feeling of being a sword. It's not a toy. It's not a dagger. It's not an impression of something. This is a, an actual sword. When you swing it, it carries weight. You actually have some authority in the cut here. And it's just a really cool sword to be working with and something that you can work with and still get the feeling of working with a sword full speed, full power, and not have to have full reach as you would. So I have been going nonstop with this guy. Uh, it is lighter than most swords, and that's just by virtue of its size. But, uh, you know, this is something that it's not a training sword to develop your, your muscles and, you know, develop your endurance. This is something to work with your dexterity and use in self-defense. So I have gotten uh, quite a few comments over, over the past few years asking which sword would I recommend for self-defense. And if it came down to it, um, if, you, if you're using a sword for self-defense, you're in a very specific situation. <laughs> I would rather suggest something that is more efficient nowadays for self-defense. But when it comes down to it, this is actually a decent option. You have good range between you and your opponent, especially if they're going to try to come at you with a knife or, or something else that's a, typically more seen these days. And you have, uh, if you have sword skill, this is a great weapon to use in a confined space if somebody's attacking you at home. So I'm not saying that this is the only option, but I am saying that this is probably one of the better options to have if you wanted to use <laughs> a sword for self-defense. But uh, I really think it's a cool, cool sword. And just having that attachment to history, especially such a, uh, a valuable sword in the Qing Dynasty. Now, like I said, there's a lot more to this. And I think probably the best video on this is by Scott Rodell. I keep referring back to it. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can learn more about it. But for handling, for space conservation, I really think this sword is amazing. So if you're looking at getting into uh, more of an upper level sword um, that's still not too expensive, something that you can kind of branch out into some like uh, the, the correct weight, the correct length as based on antiques, and you've already been doing traditional martial arts, this is a great way to step into it. The Qing Dynasty swords are typical to what modern martial arts styles practice, whether you're doing Tai Chi or uh, Kung Fu style. This is something that you can handle that is at the weight and can be at the sharpness of the what was being used by our past masters. So I really, really recommend it for that matter. And as far as cutting goes, I haven't had a chance to really test it out yet, but in moving and doing forms training, absolutely love it. Now, I did take the tassel out of this sword, or the lanyard really, because personally my palm was brushing up against it and I felt that it was affecting my control of the sword. 
it's really not that big of a deal and it comes down to your own personal preference if you like having a tassel it's really not that bad on there it's just for me i don't prefer using tassels anyway so having the lanyard on here uh, or removing that was really no big deal for me but everything else i really love about this sword the appearance uh, the length of it, the, the, uh, even, even on the long version, their Changjian, it is still uh, typical to what you would be using in uh, your regular Tai Chi sword or your Kung Fu sword. So I highly recommend this. I'm going to leave links to this sword as well in the description down below. You can check it out on the LK Chen website. And now you have just a quick look at the two different options for this sword, whether you want to get something with the wooden scabbard or if you want to get the short duan jian uh, with the black uh, leather scabbard the microfiber leather scabbard so let me know what you guys think about this sword uh, drop it down in the comments below if you have any questions i'm going to be doing some more videos showing the swords in action especially this little guy <laughs> like i said i'm obsessed with this lately and uh, showing this long one in action as well so let me know what you think. Which one do you like out of these two, uh, especially with the scabbard and the length? And what are your thoughts on why you would use one of these? So look forward to hearing that from you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. A quick look at these two swords, the Long Tran Jian by LK Chen. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.